Welcome to JavaNet Bean Fast Food Restaurant Management System. Okay, guys, let me show you guys how this works. I'm going to click on Reset. Okay, then select the checkbox and enter the amount of each individual item we want. Okay, let's say we go for that as well. We have this in there. Select anything here. Okay. Coffee, cola, meal, five of those, five, six. And we have cash in here. Supposing we decide not to enter anything there or a mistake was made, if we click on total, there we go. See that? Enter enough cash or not enough cash are entered. Supposing we decide to select debit card we can just click on total and there we go all right supposing we change this to cash and we decide to enter let's say we give handy about 90 pounds there we go the cost is this and the system just let us know how much everything costs and the customers change total subtotal overall total so let's reset and you guys have a look at how the cash works okay so cash let's say we enter a value of maybe 30 pounds in there right there that is how it works so what I will do now is to take you guys straight into Java net being development environment and we start one of these together hi and welcome to Java net being fast food restaurant system I'm going to start by clicking on new project right there make sure Java is selected and Java application click on next now you can always give your project a name I'm just going to call it Java fast food underscore fast underscore food there and you see this creates main class I'm going to uncheck that and click on finish okay right there that's my project for folder so I'm going to right click on it and select new let's select JFrame okay with the JFrame selected I'm just going to call that fast let's just call it fast food and the other one will be fast underscore food click on finish now our frame is ready the next thing is I'm going to right click on it and let's set the layout I think I'm going to go for, for absolute layer you can see the blue lines around it so absolute layers alright so now let's define the size of this frame so let's come to the prefer size right there so I'm going to change my prefer size to approximately I think I should go for 1000 maybe 1020 let's take it from there and see how it's going to look like and make this one 800 click on OK so that will be my prefer size and let's come to OK let's just extend it since I've defined my prefer size right there so okay let's run it and see how this form will look like I'm just gonna press shift F6 and let's see uh, I don't think uh, maybe I should even increase it let's let's increase it to about that so let's come back to the property here and the prefer size let's come in here maybe make that and just rebuild and press F6 okay so that's a little bit much better all right now let's go for 1500 that's all right okay now the next thing I want to do is let me come straight to the palette right there and now I'm going to select panel I have one panel here so this very panel let me change 
the border style of this little panel that's the border style right there click on that and select border line and just change that maybe let's go for about four and change the color to maybe dark gray right there click on ok there now I'm just gonna copy that very panel I'm gonna need a couple of those need more I think maybe yeah just one more okay now this very one here I'm gonna use that for my title okay I'm going to now arrange these panels the way it's meant to be so drag this one along and uh, let's move this somewhere here let's bring this right there and we can just stretch it down about that and we're going to re repeat exactly the same thing to these other ones here speed that up and just get back to you guys okay this is how my frame is looking now so what is left for me to do now is let's add some other components onto the frames I'm gonna go for okay I have a combo box here let's let's drop one here okay then we need let's look for checkbox I'm gonna need a couple of those this one here and I'm just going to copy that or maybe I should change the properties first let's change the font size of that checkbox to maybe let's go for okay 18 why not and just copy it copy and paste it there okay and just copy both again I'm gonna need about eight of those there. Another one here. Let's copy all of these together. Undo that. Just this. And paste. And there. Okay that is all my combo box ready so let's copy some more and just put maybe five in here copy that and paste it right in there so what i'll do now is just speed up the whole process of this copying and pasting of the checkbox not combo box checkbox this is the combo box here let's increase the font size of that combo box as well let's make that 18 right there there okay now let's paste some more checkbox in there let's select all of these and copy it with control c and paste it right in here okay and do that i just want the checkbox Okay, I will now speed that up and get back to you guys. Alright, now we need to add some. Let's add text field. One here. Let's change the font of that text field. Let's go for 18. And there. Okay, so we're going to copy that across. Or maybe. Let's copy it across. And I'll just speed up the whole process of this text field for you guys to get back to you. Okay, this is how the interface looks right now. So let me just run it so that you guys see it. And right there, guys, this is how the whole interface looks right now. So the next thing I'm going to do is let's come in here and change the content we have in this combo box. 
all right to change the content let's come into the properties right here and make sure you go to where it says model and right there just enter the very first one you intend to enter In my case is going to be cash followed by debit card and I'm going to go for MasterCard, comma, and Visa card. That's it. The content in there are now changed, as you can see. Okay, so if I compile and run, then click on the combo box. That is what you see, guys. So that is that. The next thing is let's take care of this readjust it and take care of the exit button okay guys let's take care of the exit so I'm going to double click on the exit make sure you select action perform that must be the event so for the exit I'm going to let's use an if statement to prompt the end user let's go for J option J option plan dot confirm dialog right there okay now so the first thing here let's just save frame let's try that again let's enter frame okay comma and in here that will be my message let me enter there let's say confirm view confirm come on, confirm if you want to exit okay now the next thing is you see right here I'm just gonna enter title my project is fast food let me enter fast food there why right here let's put that in a quote and get rid of one right here let's press enter and come to the other line right here I'm going to enter as follows let's go for the option message itself I'm going to copy that and let's paste that here paste dot let's go for yes option this very one take this one right there and we can just close that off and let's get rid of this then here let's say equals and the j option itself dot let me just copy it all all right that should take care of that now close the bracket enter a curly bracket in there and in there let's just say system dot exit so that means if yes is clicked system dot exit now now look at this error it's saying variable not declared so what I will do is you see up here I'm gonna just let's copy that and paste that in here and I'll just call that J J frame and let's go for my frame there and that is all I'll do in there you see the error is gone now let's create an object here say so j frame equals new frame equals new j j frame and what I want it to do is exit I want it to exit and just close the semicolon there and that should fix that error hopefully so take note of that a variable is declared and an object is then created in here so I'm gonna save and uh, compile okay run it now all right let's give this a try click on the exit you see that guys that is beautiful I love that you can know confirm if you want to exit yes there and it's working so have a good look at that guys from here take it down up to here that's how you write your own exit that has a prompt 
okay let's move on okay now the next thing is let's take care of this reset button double click on the reset and let's start maybe with let's go for j txt let's go for t dot set text there and now i'm going to set that to new value right there just copy this now use it for the rest now let's go for jtxt fries there that is for fries jtxt salad j txt hamburger okay i think i have j t x t cola j t x e coffee okay i will now speed that up now that you guys get the whole idea okay the j text box is taken care of there we go guys those are all the codes for the j text box now let's try out these lines of codes i'm gonna run it and let's see okay let's enter some data in there as you can see we can enter what whatever data in there we need to take care of that as well to make sure we are only able to enter numbers but before then let's just see how this works okay hit reset there guys oh there's one missing it's very one okay let's find out the name of that very object come into design right click on it okay that's the name control c and go back to where the codes are we'll paste the name right here just copy all of these and that should take care of that there okay the next thing is you see this checkbox we need to take care of the checkbox so let's go back in here and double click on reset so right underneath here i've put a line here just to show us the difference so that's going to be j chk let's go for fries first fries dot set selected using boolean so in this case it's going to be false there that's all there is to that okay let's do one more I'm just going to copy this so that we can speed it up copy the next one will be j c h k salad there so that's the salad one taken care of as well so i will now speed this up guys all right i've uh, finished on checking the checkbox there they are those are the lines of code that take care of that okay so let's give it a try let's select a couple right there guys they are all selected now so let's give our reset a try and try this one as well okay click on reset right there guys you see that we need to make sure we are not able to enter strings in here we just want the values to be numbers alone so to do that what I will do is let's double click or click on each of the text box right click on it and select the following event let's come to key key type right here click on key type right in here look at that that's the name of my object and that's the event key type 
I will then enter as follows. Let's declare a character char i number. That's my variable i number. You can call yours whatever you want. Event dot get key character column. Then I will use an if statement if if not character dot is digit right here and enter the name of my variable there which is right there already okay now the next thing is let's use all is number or i number sorry let me just copy that i number equals equals Let's say key events dot v k underscore backslash. Let's go for backslash v k underscore backspace. All right, let's take that backspace right. Or again, you can just copy all of these then. Let's copy that and just change the content in there okay now this time around let me use vk as a dot vk delete let's see underscore delete right there and close that then enter a query bracket event dot consume right there and that okay guys that is how it looks right now so which means let's compile and run it so that you guys see what I'm talking about run that and that is for event fries so in there I can always enter numbers but I cannot I cannot enter strings okay let me demonstrate that with a virtual keyboard let's move it down so right in there reset that and come right in there check that out guys that is not working but if we enter numbers you see that okay so that's how that is going to work i'm just going to minimize or close that and reset so what i will do now is copy that lines of code this very one just copy it up to here then repeat exactly the same thing for the rest objects events key and key type right in here paste one more key type and just paste that right in here so I will now speed that up guys Okay, the last code for, or the last uh, component for the key type event is entered. The code is entered here. So that is how it all looks now, guys. As you can see, it's the same lines of code that prevent the end user from entering strings or characters instead of numbers. So let's compile and run. Okay, we can then try let's try some other ones to enter characters in some other ones let's just click on that no that's not possible impossible as well okay guys now you that you see how it works okay so i'm going to now close that and that take care of or that takes care of the number only codes so reset exit and there those are the lines of codes so if you enter that for each of those text box that will take care of it all right let's continue the next task is to disable all of the text box so let's select it all 
just runs along and come in here now that is all selected let's go straight into the properties and you come to where it says enable make that force and you see they are all grayed out so you then go straight into the checkbox double click on the checkbox and you enter as follows so let me get this name of this checkbox we we'll then use an if statement to enable it if price dot is selected there okay then enter your query bracket in there then you say t jtxc price dot is uh, set enable right here make that true there else this becomes force right in there so let's just make it force okay so that's hopefully that should enable it and if it's unchecked it will be set to force that's it right there okay let's give that a try and you guys see how it works okay let's give it a try click on this checkbox there you can see that guys and undo click undo so I'm gonna repeat the same thing for the rest of the checkbox as well okay that's fine maybe just copy now come into the salad double click on that paste that in there and just change the name around is all right there so I'm gonna repeat that for each individual that's the seller taking care of double click on that as hamburger and right in here paste the hamburger and just change it to hamburger so now that you get the whole idea so i'll just kind of like speed it up okay before we speed it up one other thing is for us to set the focus okay so to to do that I think i've already set some focus here let me show you guys one thing now then select let's select all of these so that you can see the focus properly i will align all of these center so let's go to the horizontal align and then we come back and get that sorted let's align this center as well horizontal align instead of leading let's go for center so that's done for all of those okay this one is done already i believe yeah okay now let's come in here let's copy this try that again go back in there you see the hamburger is set focus already so let's tell you this okay so the focus is set so i'm gonna get this copy this and bring it in here double click on that and paste that in there just change the names around let's repeat that here there so let me run the focus for you i'll run it so that you see how the focus works so select any of these can you see that guys you see the focus right in there and that you can see the cursor there okay so i will now speed it up for the rest of the checkbox so let's do that now okay the lines of codes are now completed let me just show it to you guys that is for the ash brown toasted baguette pineapple steak chocolate muffin you can see it all and it's just the same lines of codes for for the checkbox so if the checkbox is selected the text box box become enabled and focus is set on them that is it 
and that is all there is to that okay now let's speed that up and start work on some other task so let's go back to the design so let's enter zero for all of these text box so that will be the default content in there I've already select each of the text box so I'll enter zero there and just click in here somewhere and that is it they all have values in them now okay the other tags that we ought to have done is anytime we check this we expect this zero to disappear okay so that's what I'm gonna do now we, that means we have to go back to this checkbox come right here double click on this and right here I'm gonna enter J text box dot set text let's make that no value okay else if it's unchecked, we expect the zero value to be replaced. So there. Okay, so let's compile and run that. Let me see how it works and take it from there. Now click on that. There we go. Uncheck. Click on it. That's fine. So that is working. So I'm going to have to repeat the same thing for the rest of the components now double click on salad and come right there let me just copy that dot set text there and just copy and paste that underneath there Okay, now that you guys get the idea, I'm going to speed that up. Okay guys, this is how the lines of codes look now for the checkbox. Alright, so, which means, if you click on the checkbox, the content in the text box opposite it becomes empty. But if you uncheck, there we go, the content is replaced with zero it default back to zero and that's what I'm done for the rest of the components so fully that should work let's run it if I uncheck that you see that check uncheck and they are all working the way I want okay that's fine so exit okay guys the next thing is let's declare some global variables right up here to start with the total calculation let's come right up here and right underneath here I'm gonna go for double price underscore that will be bottle of water. Okay. And let's do for one one pound nine. So that is the very first one. So I will just speed up the rest of the variable declaration. Okay, guys, those are the variable de declared, the variables declared for. The calculation and I've also entered tax rate in there and I'll then declare some other variables uh, five of those in total that I will use for the calculation and here I have an array so I'm going to change this to item cost and let's go for lower case item cost that's the name of this array right here okay so that's an array so let's so that you guys know the difference there we go these are just variables and here these are more or less variables with the price anyway they are all variable with the price of each item 
okay so it's sort of like constant for these each items all right so what i would do now is go straight inside this total double click on total okay right inside this total the uh, the array item cost i will start with that of zero equals let's go for double dot that will be sorry that will be double dot pause double and the very first item that is j t x t fries dot get text so what that means is whatever value I have inside the fries text box is then stored in array number zero so I'm going to repeat that for the rest of the object okay this is array number one two three four five and this will become salad this becomes hamburger okay so I'm gonna speed that up guys in total there will be 22 of those so let's speed that up now okay guys the all of the values have now been entered into each of the arrays so we will now use one of the variable up there to add it all up so let's go for i subtotal that's one of the variables up there equals let's try this out then we take it from there plus cost Okay, before we continue, let's test this one out and let me add a couple more anyway. So let's go for let's add more of those. Then we try it out just to verify that it's working as expected before we continue. That's three. Let's add one more here and make this four okay let's let's assign this value somewhere so we declare a string variable string i amount equals equals string dot format And let's enter ask it to convert whatever is in there to pound sign. Let's pound sign and uh, two decimal place. That is it. And what is it converting to pound sign? That will be I subtotal this very one. Let's paste that in here. Okay, enter SME column there. Now I, now I will now assign the value straight into LBL total dot set text and the text we set set now is I amount there. Okay now let's try this out. Let's see. I'm gonna compile and then run it click on run there so let's select some of these items here just enter whatever in there I think I have that in place as well I have up to four of those I think then this might be one of them as well yeah so if I click on total right there that is the cost so now let's continue then. so 
it's working fine so all I just need to do now is I'm going to copy all of these I'll just add more that will be 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 Okay, I will now enter the numbers. This is five. Just pick that up. Okay, this is how it looks now. So let's take care of the rest. The first thing is I'm gonna take care of the tax. Let's say tax equals. Let's go for right here that is this very one we multiply that by tax rate underscore rate and then let's divide that by 100 that will give us the tax now to assign this tax into the component lbl tax let's get the string value string value equals uh, let's say c tax equals as follows I'm just going to copy all of that paste that in there that will be for the tax then the tax here just place that in there and lbl tax that set what are we setting that will be C tax right there so we've taken care of I think that's J J L B L okay we've taken care of the tax right now what about subtotal in the case of subtotal all we need to do is everything in there so let's say this is my subtotal and just not to be confused, I'm going to call this C subtotal, C subtotal, and change this to, let's change this one here to subtotal. And this one, instead of amount, I'm going to change it to C total. Okay, get this one. That becomes C total. Now to get a total amount, I'm just going to add up tax. This very one. Add it there. Add it with subtotal. So that should give me here. I will get my tax subtotal and total. So let's compile and run and see how it's it's going to look like. All right, select or select something there. Let's go for two and one of that three of these. Now we want a cooler and that so if we click on that we get that's the tax a subtotal now let's see what, what went wrong close that sub total all right we need to change these to subtotal there so let's run that again let's see select anything Right there, that's the tax, that's the subtotal. We add this together, it gives us that, and that's fine. Okay, now we're heading somewhere. I want to be able to select cash or select any of these names before the calculation will take place. So, what I'll do is let's exit and go into the calculation right here that's total double click on total 
and right here I'm going to use the following so let's go for string equals now let's give it a name first string uh, let's say payment payment method there equals let's make that string and that is supposed to be my j c m b payment method dot let's go for get selected item this very one and there so that variable should capture the selected item either cash visa card mastercard or debit card i will now use an if statement to validate that let's come in here select all of this come right underneath here enter if this equals equals cash i want the system to calculate all of this let's close it here okay that is that okay else I'm gonna copy all of these that just carry out the calculation without validating the cash or not okay now that is sorted so let's try this out first before we continue. Run that now. And in here, let's make a selection and we select something there. I'm not going to select cash. Okay, if I select cash, that should work right. Even if I select this, it will also work. But well, supposing I don't have that. Let's take off the else for now. Let's come right down here. See where I have the else statement. I think I'm just going to comment it all out. So the else is not going to work. Save that and just run it again. As just to check that the that, that works. Okay, let's select something else there. It's not working. Okay, supposing we select cash right there. Okay, in the case of cash, you must enter a value in here. So I would like that to be deducted from this and entered in here. Right, that is fine. So exit and get rid of the comments. Get rid of the comment as well okay for the cash we would need to store the value in here whatever the the sales assistant enter in here we need to store that somewhere so we already have a variable up there called i change so let's say i change equals i'm gonna copy all of this and just change it around paste that in there and in here that's supposed to be payment method right that is the name of that very text box all right now we need to the other thing we need to do is to make sure that there's something in here that is not a zero it's enough money okay now that we've saw the value here we now need to let's get a string on board so i'm going to go for string let's say c change equals i'm going to copy all of these and 
what I will do with that is let's get the change out I change I'll go for I change okay minus whatever is in here right so put this in bracket there so whatever we have inside our I change if you have 20 pounds and the total price is 15 pounds is taken away from here and stored right in here and I want the change on the change inside J L B L change dot sets text oh come on the set text equals C change there okay so we'll be able to get whatever change is left all right the next thing is supposing the customer actually handed handed in less than the value of the purchase so we need to work that out so in here I'm gonna use if statement if I change this very one is greater than equals to then I want all this calculation to take place all this calculation should take, take place okay now we end that we need to end that here right else maybe we should use else if to select the other ones okay we let's use else if else if let's copy this if payment method equals debit card Or payment method equals maybe Visa card or Mastercard or payment method equals this. So let's change this to Mastercard and we change this to Visa card. There. So if any of the selection made equals any of these carry out this calculation else right there else we need a message message box so let's go for J option plan dot let's go for show message where is that show show message there we go show message dialog box then maybe I'll go for show message dialog box let me set that to known and right in here I'm going to change that to enter and I'll start that again okay say enter enough cash okay and here let's make this fast food that will be my tie today okay enter enough cash the other thing is I'm gonna select this let's select that come right in here paste that there dot let's go for this option okay right okay you see this else if okay let's move it i'm gonna cut it off we should have it somewhere here because that is for this so let's come in here and just paste it right there 
so else this message box should pop up else if this would carry out the calculation all right so let's have a good look at all of the codes again for this total so you guys will have opportunity to see it as well this is where i'm checking whatever the sales assistant enter and then is either greater than or equals to whatever the item purchased and now that's for the tax okay this tax is stored in here subtotal total the change given else there will be an error for entry invalid amount so enter enough cash all right or maybe we can change that not enough cash entered yeah maybe something like that not not enough cash not enough cash entered or recorded whatever okay that's fine now else if the user selects debit card mastercard or visa card of this calculation takes place there will be no change given just like we have right here okay let, let's compile and run let's run down and see okay select whatever there so let's enter some money how many items we want and maybe here and here here as well and there and let's say we only have 10 pounds not enough cash entered click on ok so let's enter maybe 100 pounds right there guys you can see add this and this together and we end up with this then subtract that from 100 you get your change that's the change you give to your customer that's the tax up to total add up that gives you the total that is good that's very good so now we need to let's check the reset all of the other reset works all this should default back to zero that did not happen and this is not cleared so let's go back to the system and get that sorted go back to the reset double click on the reset change all of these to zero yeah that will take care of that so repeat the same thing for all there I'm gonna speed that up okay that is how it all looks now the other thing we need to reset is J L E L change dot set text and we make that no because we don't need not anything in there. Okay, so we do that for the tax as well. J L B L tax J L L B L LBL sub total and J LBL total there so that is all of that reset but there's going to be one more there's going to be one more problem here I will have to I think I'm gonna to have to disable the text box once I click on reset all the text box must become disabled okay to disable all of that we will start by entering let me paste that in here okay that becomes j txt fries no dot double set enable there we go make 
that falls all right that's one of them taken care of let's run it and see how it works okay so so enter some value in there let's select anything at random okay click on this card that's the cost of everything no change given now if we reset click on reset there you can see this one is reset okay and the rest are now reset so even if we go back you see that so i need to take care of the rest so let's copy this let's go for j txt salad there so i'm now going to speed that up and there we go guys those are the lines of code for reset okay that's looking good now take it back up so that you can see it all right let's compile and run okay let's select an item randomly or any item randomly okay let's come in here four of those let's go for coffee three coffees three of those and one or two teas all right someone with a sweet tooth there okay there so we're going to assume it's cash and there's nothing here click on that not enough cash entered all right so let's say is debit card right there that's the cost the tax subtotal and if we reset there we go guys now the reset buttons work everything works okay now let's finish up this so we have two there some legs and we want some of those here okay make some other selections here as well all right let's come in here select something some selections as well one more here there so let's try out the let's try out the mastercard the cash should enable this which means we need to get that sorted okay try out the mastercard there guys okay so let's take care of the cash and then we can call it the end of the program because the cash should enable this right so let's reset reset it all exit okay let's click on reset right here somewhere we should have there we go that is it i'm going to disable that or just delete it because we want it to be active right let's try it out again and run it there we go guys so enter whatever amount we want in there and right there maybe that's seven here maybe two we want two of these four of those eight of those two and right here coffee one we want five of those eight let's say six two five and maybe milkshake as well there so no cash that's what you get 
and if we use this there we're using our debit card click on that and that's what you get guys with that I'm gonna call it the end of this tutorial I suppose you guys enjoyed so you all have a nice day now bye for now